So what I have here is a mini PC from Microsoft. In fact, it's a development kit for developers to write uh, applications for Windows. Uh, it's got, you know, quite good specs, 32 gigabytes of RAM, half a terabyte of SSD storage, got USB-C, mini display port, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, physical ethernet, uh, a very nice mini PC for developers. Oh yeah, and one other thing to mention, inside is a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. First off, just let me thank Qualcomm for sponsoring this video. So this developer's kit is from Microsoft itself. It's codenamed Project Volterra. Its official name is the Windows Dev Kit 2023. And the idea is to bring a high spec uh, development kit, so that's 32 gigabytes of RAM, half a terabyte of storage, octa-core processor to the market so that developers can create, test, run, debug their Windows software targeting the Qualcomm Snapdragon platform, which of course is based on a 64-bit ARM architecture. Now this isn't the first kit that's out there for targeting Windows on ARM. However, it's the first one really that comes with such good specs that actually developers really need if they want to use this in kind of any earnest. Now, before we dive more into Project Volterra and what it can do and what the Qualcomm Snapdragon platform can do, let's bust a few myths about Windows on ARM. So the first myth is that ARM processors are slow and they're only meant for smartphones. Well, clearly that's not true. Very quickly just mentioned, during most of 2021, the fastest computer in the world, a supercomputer, was actually based on the ARM architecture. Companies like Microsoft offer cloud instances now based on the ARM architecture, so that'd be Azure for Microsoft. And then of course, you've got boxes like this one. This has got an octa-core processor clocked at up to three gigahertz in it. So these are not just things that you find in smartphones. This is serious stuff all the way up to supercomputer and cloud level, all using the ARM architecture. Another myth is that there are no development tools available. Well, clearly that's not true because even Visual Studio 2022 is available as an ARM native version for the project Volterra. You've also got Visual Studio Code, you've got .NET 7, all ARM native. And then of course you've got other things like uh, Python, Java, Golang, all available as ARM native uh, binaries. There's no software available for ARM processors on Windows. That's another common myth. Well, obviously that's not true. Windows itself uh, is available. All those development tools I just mentioned are available. Microsoft Teams, Microsoft 365, Adobe Photoshop, they're all available native ARM versions for Windows on Snapdragon. Another myth is that it can't run 64-bit x86 software as emulation. Again, that's not true. Here's a demo of me running uh, Google Chrome, the 64-bit uh, x86 version under simulation on the Project Volterra box works absolutely fine. Now that we've got those myths out of the way, we can see that Windows on Snapdragon is a real alternative to the traditional platforms that we run uh, Windows on today. Now I'm saying Windows on Snapdragon for three specific reasons. One is that Qualcomm have invested a lot of time and money and effort together with Microsoft to get Windows running on the ARM architecture. The second reason is because there are devices like the Surface Pro 9 5G, which come with a built-in 5G modem, then you can connect anywhere where you have cellular connectivity, plus you get the benefits of the power efficiency of using Qualcomm's uh, processors. So you get this whole breed of devices really always on, always connected because of the use of the Snapdragon platform. And the third point is because the heritage of the Snapdragon platform is in mobile, then you get more than just a CPU and a GPU, you get things like an AI engine, image processing, and so on. And that's really important because now what we can have is a Windows platform that can take advantage of more than just the CPU and the GPU. It can take advantage of the AI engine, it can take advantage of the image signal processing. And that's important for computing of tomorrow because clearly what we're gonna be using is not just CPU and GPU. We're gonna to need to use things like an AI engine, a neural processing unit, uh, and image processing, and so on. Now, Windows 11 officially supports uh, the neural processing unit, the AI engine inside of the Snapdragon platform. And so you can access that as an app developer uh, in a couple of ways. For example, you can use Qualcomm's neural processing SDK, which is available for Windows, gives you access to that. And there are also some open source frameworks like ONNX, which is built on top of Qualcomm's 
uh, you know, neural processing SDK, and then you can use that with things like PyTorch or whatever that you want to use. And because it's open source and standard, you can just get your apps up and running and take advantage of the AI engine in the Qualcomm Snapdragon platform uh, almost immediately. And because of that, Microsoft themselves have added some features to Windows 11 called Windows Studio FX that is aimed at improving how we do video calls. So online meetings, you know, all the stuff. You've got things like blurry background. You've also got things like auto framing. So if you move around inside the frame, the camera will track to you eye contact, voice focus, which is a really impressive feature. In fact, here's just a very quick demo from Microsoft themselves just to show you how this thing can block out background noise and just focus on the voice uh, of the speaker. With a powerful MPU, we can run large models efficiently so you can be heard better. I'm sure you haven't been able to hear any of this because I've been running the new MPU-based voice focus and there's actually a gardener who's decided that this is the right time to blow leaves. You should hear how it really sounds. Hold on. It's more difficult to hear me, right? Now, one important takeaway from that demo was that the CPU usage was very, very low because all this stuff, which can all be used at the same time, you can switch on all those features, background blowing, voice, voice focus, auto framing, all at the same time, doesn't tax the CPU because it's being done in the AI engine. And that's something that's exclusive to the Qualcomm Snapdragon platform at the moment. So let's just talk a little bit about the Qualcomm Snapdragon processor that's inside Project Volterra. It is in fact the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX, that's their computing platform, generation three, which means you've got four Cortex X1 cores and four Cortex A78 cores, so octa-core in total. Notice not four cores and eight threads, that's eight actual fully functioning cores that run inside of this. And as I said, 32 gigabytes of memory uh, and uh, the, the storage and so on, all those ports. So you could actually use this as a normal desktop PC. That isn't what it's aimed for, it's aimed for developers, but now because of the octa-core processor, because of the amount of RAM, because of the amount of storage, you can install Visual Studio, start writing apps, start writing Windows programs, targeting uh, ARM, targeting x86, and it actually becomes a proper development kit. When it comes to performance, that is a bit of a tricky area because people ask generic questions like, is it faster than Intel? Well, which Intel? I mean, there are so many different processors, you know, i3, i5, i7, i9, server processors, laptop processors, Celeron, Pendron, which one are you talking about? Which generation, you know, how many cores, how many threads? I mean, it's just such a complex area in that sense. Here's just to throw out a few numbers for you. And I'm using my multi-thread test tool, which is available in my GitHub repository. I'm using my compiler test tool, which is available in my GitHub repository. Now, in general terms, if you take a kind of a mini PC processor like the Celeron J4125, the Project Volta is like two and a half times faster uh, than that. If you take something like the Raspberry Pi, for single threaded kind of scores, it's at least twice as fast uh, as that. If you type general multi-threaded computing, it's kind of on par with an i7-1250U. Uh, so what that all means is this feels like a normal mini PC. It's snappy, it's quick, it's responsive. You can open up as many tabs as you want in the browser. You've got 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's got fast storage. You can run up Visual Studio. You can develop uh, Windows applications on it. You can access uh, the NPU. In fact, if you were just to start using one, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this and any other mini PC. And if I said to you, oh, do you know that's got a Snapdragon processor on it? You'd be like, Oh really? This just looks and feels like a normal development kit. So you can pick up these dev kits from the Microsoft Store for $599 and it's a great way of getting hardware accelerated machine learning into your programs in a standard way because it's part of Windows itself. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. Do let me know in the comments below what you think about the Windows dev kit, aka Project Volterra.